Welcome everyone. Today we have Aisha with us. She's been with BCG for over six years. She's at BCG London right now. Welcome. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for having me. And today we're going to talk about the role of women in consulting. Let's get started. All right. Welcome again. Thank you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your background, first of all? Sure. As you just mentioned, I've been with BCG now six and a half years. Now I'm a senior manager at BCG's Global Diversity, Equity and Inclusion team. And I look after our DNI pillar that focuses on a disability inclusion, accessibility at BCG. After I joined BCG, I was part of the Istanbul office and I transferred to Stockholm office as a consultant. And I worked there like one and a half years ago. Yes, yeah, so I had a chance to experience also another office. And then I felt like I had my fair share of consulting, if sure. that makes sense. <laughs> and then I started um, exploring different opportunities within BCG and I found like an internal project as a consultant with the global DNI team. If you like, I was like an in-house consultant and I found my true passion and decided to move over to what we call business services team of the organization. And yeah, uh, a bit more than year now i've been part of the internal team and working on dni and disability inclusion that's lovely and i understand that your current role involves you doing some internal projects within the disabilities uh, initiatives uh, and do you do anything related to the woman in specific or is it another team that's taking care of it it's actually the same team so we have a dni team diversity equity inclusion team at the global level regional level and like our local offices and so it's the overall DNI agenda that includes different pillars of DNI. So Women at BCG, which focuses on gender equality, is also part of our overall DNI agenda. So yes, it's the same team. It's not my immediate scope, but it's another a team member who focuses on women related initiatives. Of course, but you must have a good oversight. So why don't we then together Indeed. dig deeper into this? Because I really think people who are watching our videos, they are the ones who are getting ready for consulting interviews. And one of the key things that they're asking is why they want to work at BCG. So I really feel like, especially for our woman audience out there, there's going to be a lot of great insights that you could take out of this video. So do you want to tell me a bit more about the women at BCG initiatives? What are the key things? that BCG is working on, why did that start in the first place? Yeah, yeah. And actually, I think you're spot on because I have been also myself part of the consulting team, right? So I also experienced some of the challenges as a woman in consulting. And now I have this as my role, so I, I think I can talk to both. Maybe starting with the why piece, let's be honest, like consulting is an industry that is high-paced, highly demanding, right? And everyone is quite driven and, you know, all of that. The work-life balance has always been a challenge, especially from like gender equality perspective. We know that in some cultures and countries, women do take more responsibilities about their personal life, family life, etc. And that's where it starts becoming a bit tricky to navigate both those personal responsibilities outside work and having a successful career at an organization like BCG where everyone is like bringing their A game every day, right? Sure. And so that's kind of the why, if you like, that we need to have these initiatives to make it equitable and like level the field. With specific to BCG, I think there has been quite a lot of focus on gender equality for at least last 10 years, even longer. Yeah. We have made significant progress. When you look at the overall blended numbers, we actually do have like quite balanced, almost 50-50 uh, representation, uh, but this is blended, right? And we have more challenge about senior cohorts. And so that's kind of one of the main reasons why BCG focuses so much on gender equality and women at BCG. And there are like a couple of concrete examples I can give you in terms of like initiatives. Please listen to this part of the video very carefully because I think you can use a lot of insights right now in your fit interviews. <laughs> no pressure on me. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so yeah, like number one that comes to my mind because now I'm based in the London office. Most recently, a couple of months ago, we launched an initiative that is basically like beyond and above of the UK standard when it comes to parental leave. And it is actually like fully equitable in the sense that it includes not only like mom and dad and like more traditional kind of parenting model, but even like same sex parents. 
So this is something really concrete and like a really important step forward to make sure that our women employees are having the same career progression opportunity because now they can take equal amount of parental leave. So this is not only for women who is giving birth, but also their partners. Sure. So And it's completely equal. So hopefully this will level the field. And is this something you see with other consulting firms? Is this a trend that's currently happening? Or do you see BCG is more like pioneering in this field? I would say both. And again, I, I always try to give like a humble and balanced view. So I think there's like an overall trend that all consulting and professional services industries where work-life balance is a bit challenge, they all have been focusing on gender equality. But then BCG is really like fully committed to this. And as part of the DNI team now, I see how much accountability and even pressure on like most senior leadership at the office level, at the regional level, you know, we have different practice areas. So you really feel that everyone is taking it super seriously. So I think the answer is both. Like there's an overarching trend, but then... BCG is really leading the way on gender equality. And what other initiatives does BCG do here? I mentioned this concrete one that is most recent in the London office and more broadly like across the globe that we operate. There are, of course, other initiatives. So one thing that we invest quite a lot is mentorship. Okay. And our most recent research, it's called Bliss, also reveals like how significant impact mentorship programs has in the feelings of inclusion and belonging. And so we offer mentorship programs tailored only for our female talent, especially on the CT side, also for internal roles, but yeah, even more on the CT side. And does it differ based on the seniority of the consultants too? We follow this approach of segment of one. So we try to make it personalized and one-to-one. So it is almost always tailored down to individual. So not only like the cohort that they belong, but to sure. individual, like what are their background from other industry? Yeah, what is like the development plan for that particular female talent, etc. So yeah, like it is nuanced between cohorts as well as, you know, even at the individual level. So for instance, for more junior cohorts, we host flagship event every year that's called Aspire. Okay. And I hope maybe some of you either applied or will join that event because it's really flagship i remember one of my trainees she recently participated in the event did it take place in lisbon yeah yeah i think that was last year like, literally I mean, like a couple year. months ago yeah, yeah yeah like because we're still in 2023 yeah. yeah so it was a couple of months ago and yeah it's just like such an immersive experience over a couple of days yeah this is more for junior cohorts for instance And then, of course, like at the local level, officers always come up with very kind of impactful and creative ways to attract especially more senior talent, woman talent, because that's what we really, really need at the moment. As I mentioned, it's a bit of more challenge for us when you go up to Pyramid. Yeah, so those are like some specific initiatives, but there are even more, I'm sure, at the local level. So to summarize, right, to break it down for you again, so we talked about Woman at BCG, you can just Google that, it's there. We talked about Bliss, right? The research that's Most done. Most recent research on more broadly like DNI, not just gender equality, but all like diversity and inclusion. Exactly. We talked about the one on one mentorship programs at BCG across all seniority levels. So you can definitely use those in your fit into your answers as well. It makes total sense. So as I understand now, you know, as whole BCG is doing a lot of things to bring the gender equality, but also as a woman consultant like yourself, you've been in consulting for over six years now. You've been in different locations, taking part in different roles. What were the main challenges mm. that you think you've faced so far? I would say number one was, yeah, work-life balance. I guess I'm stating the obvious here. And that's why I said earlier I had my fair share because the truth is I truly enjoyed what I have been doing. It's um, super like intellectually stimulating, you know, you have exposure and a lot of responsibility at a very early age. So that's why the learning curve is really steep. But then it comes with trade-offs, right? So you're serving clients and blue chip clients, not just some clients, but like, you know, yeah, like largest corporations out there. 
and you're always working towards perfection, right? So it's not just the number of hours you put in, but also because you're serving clients, that service mindset requires you to be on almost all of the time, (laughs) or maybe most of the time. And there are always deadlines that you're chasing. So yeah, it is highly demanding. And again, it's not just number of hours you put in, but also like high pressure and high expectations, I would say. Yeah. And I found this at the beginning of my career, even more challenging, like the first year of consulting. I think everyone would agree that, yeah, it's the most difficult year. And it it doesn't matter. Even if you work with another consulting firm, just because you change to a new company, I think it makes it really challenging. And do you think this became more challenging for you as a woman as well? Mm. And do you think this is going to change in the future as you step up your career ladder? Personally, I wasn't in a stage of my life yet where the personal responsibilities related to family or, you know, taking care of elderly parents, etc. Those didn't really overlap yet with my career journey on the consulting track. Um, because I left, yeah, before that happened. And also like, I wasn't even like a project leader. I was a consultant level when I left. But then I always felt like if this is challenging, even now without like personal responsibilities, I had the feeling that it would be even more challenging for me to navigate the two at the same time. To your question, I did experience the challenge, not because of these personal responsibilities, but more due to high pressure. And also maybe why I even started getting concerned about it before even it started is really like limited number of uh, role models. And this is really changing right now. Now, I think with the new generation of MDPs, like managing directors and partners, we do see really great role models that makes you believe I can also do this, like have a successful career and personal life outside. But I think it wasn't like that. It is significantly improving now. But when I reflect about like, yeah, six years ago, there were not so many role models. And now it is promising to see like the next generation is actually kind of. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe we can finish this video by just getting some of your tips as well. Let's say for those who want to join consulting, especially women. Uh, what do you think that they need to do more so that they can make the most out of their consulting career and then they just get a head start as they join a firm? Yeah, I would say number one is setting boundaries. And I mean it in a constructive way, of course, like, you know, uh, constructive in the sense that, yeah, like finding a good balance within your uh, project leadership and your team members. But you do have to set boundaries because what I... I mentioned earlier the fact that like you're almost always on and you're serving clients there's always some kind of urgent things that needs to be done and if you don't set these boundaries i think it's really easy to have like an even more challenging work-life balance and also as a woman uh, there are quite a lot of research out there that shows correlation and kind of patterns about how men behave in the workplace and women tend to behave, right? We have sometimes different tendencies and we see that like women and men actually at the same qualification, but then women sometimes question themselves versus their male peer is overconfidence and they're much better at setting boundaries, etc. And there are no implications. So number one, I would say feel empowered to set boundaries because that will allow you to have better work-life balance and more sustainable career, right? Do you think it's achievable for a junior consultant to do that? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Uh, and actually, funny enough, we had global town hall related to DNI a couple of months ago, and that was a question from I think a consultant um, colleague who is based somewhere in Europe. I think in in Sp- Spanish office. Sure. Anyways, he asked exactly the same question because we had MDP saying like, "Yeah, you should set boundaries," but he was like, "Yeah, but I'm just a consultant. Like, how do I do that?" Yeah. And I see your point. It's it's a fair fair challenge. But I guess like we, that's how I approach it at least. That we kind of have to do it for the sake of our own productivity which will also benefit the company right so my answer would be that i hear you maybe it doesn't come natural to everyone but then 
how you position it is also important. And that's why I use the word constructive. Like if you actually explain where you're coming from, like, look, these are my constraints. This is what is going on in my personal life. And that's why I need to be off on Fridays. Like I need to work on 80%. Otherwise, I cannot keep doing this. And then if you have this constructive conversation and you explain them where you're coming from, then people reason. So. Yeah, it makes sense. And I think it's also maybe in a way a local decision too. So I don't know much about BCG, but I have a colleague at LEK in yeah. London. Yeah. And she told me that some of her team members, uh, juniors, they send placeholders for some evenings, like yeah. once or twice a week, so that at least it's protected. Yeah. So if there are some procedures in place, maybe in your local office, whether you're from BCG or elsewhere, I think this kind of process do help you a lot as well. Yeah, and I think that's actually, even during my time, which is not that long, like six and a half years. I've, it's pretty long. Yeah, for consulting it's wrong, you're right. Um, so I've seen like the trend improving so now i think we have formal mechanisms like so-called pto at bcg that has been launched when i joined bcg so i could see the difference right and so these are like weekly uh, facilitated discussions where everyone hopefully openly talks about how is the work-life balance are we creating value for the client on this project am i learning enough etc and then during that weekly sessions you do identify, okay, I want to be off by 7 p.m. on Thursdays, or I want to have like exercise at least two times during weekdays. So this type of like very concrete demands, if you like, you want to have during the project. Yeah, I think now we have mechanisms and hopefully, I believe culture is also improving in that direction. And also I feel like the new generation, like the fresh grads that are coming into consulting yeah. they're very vocal about you know their uh, work-life balance and their priorities so i'm optimistic yeah that's very good so besides setting boundaries is there anything else that you think people need to look out for yeah there are so i think setting boundaries also goes hand in hand with building your brand so i would say like know your strengths and own them yeah of course like there's a delicate balance of you know being humble and at the same time but yeah, like know your strengths and own them and build a brand for whatever your strength is. Then I think it will become easier to also set boundaries. And in addition to that, I would say networking is extremely important. Again, like our research and all the research out there shows the importance of mentorship and coaching. And that's guidance from upward, but also peer to peer networking especially like consulting firms, including BCG, it's a partnership model, right? So we have MDPs. And so if you think about it, it's highly networked group of people who are owning and running the firm. And so if that is your ambition, you need to invest from day one to have like an equity within the firm through your network, through your brand. And I think this all comes together quite well. And so networking is super important. And even if you are associate day one, I think you should have this long-term vision and yeah, start building your network. Yeah. And maybe the last but not least, when it comes to like negotiating, not just your compensation, but you know, when you will be promoted and what kind of staffing opportunities or even like international opportunities, right? And you want to pursue because you have your brand and you're good at like, you know, uh, setting your priorities. Uh, you should also feel empowered, especially as a woman, to, yeah, to demand for more. Because, again, let's be honest, like we put in so much effort and uh, we put in like 100% of our capacity into this job. And in return, we should get nothing less than 100. So, and again, there are quite a lot of research out there showing that, you know, women tend to be not as negotiating as their male colleagues. And again, I think we should all feel empowered. Lovely. Thank you so much for your great insight. It's, it's my pleasure. And thank you so much again for having me. I believe this video is going to serve as a reference point for any woman who want to get into consulting. So again, thanks a lot for your time. My pleasure. See you in the next video. Take care.